Hello and welcome to the stock specific class for Thursday, July the 29th. Uh, markets rebound a little bit from the selling uh, last Tuesday, and we did come off the lows um, by the end of the, the day. Uh, it looked uh, a lot more bearish at the time of the market update, um, uh, but the, the buyers kind of came in right at the end of the day, pushing up and kind of rebounding down a little bit higher today. Uh, we'll talk about that when we look at the charts here in just a second. Um, as far as the direction alerts, um, we're still uh, kind of dealing with that tired market condition. We're dealing with some of the divergences. I talked about the, the uh, market breadth uh, kind of lagging, um, although we are seeing, seeing it pick up a little bit today. Um, we'll see if that um, can, can lead the market higher. I don't think the market's going to go much higher in, until that, that breadth uh, picks up. But we are, you know, reaching new highs in the market. But we do have that divergence in the indicators where they're they've been moving lower. Um, and like I said, it could be that we start to see uh, market breadth um, diverge, start moving higher with the market, uh, or not diverge, but move along in the same direction as the market. We'll, we'll keep a close eye on that over the next few days. You can see momentum uh, backed off a little bit uh, with that selling last. Tuesday, but it's uh, it, it looks like it's moving back up again. Uh, Brett, like I had mentioned, is uh, it's still in the trending area here, but it's starting to it's starting to move in the right direction. We want to see it start to get into the into the green area there, and 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 um, that'll tell us that the the trend is is a little bit stronger, and we can kind of trust the trend a little bit more uh, for for our individual trades. Sentiment is still uh, high. Um, and it's it's starting to get a little bit closer to getting to that extreme range again, and so that's good. That, that we want to see we want to see those indicators start moving uh, moving to the right there. That'll that'll tell us we're dealing with a much more healthy um, market condition, a much more healthy trend. As far as the buy sell ratios, um, again, one thing we talked about on Tuesday was uh, this little indicator down here that um, you want the the buy sell ratio uh, this is of the basically the whole market you you want to see it um, at one or above one um, now we're not there yet we are up a little bit from where we were on tuesday we're at point six zero right now we want that to be one one uh, over one uh, you can see the uh, over here just want to see it hit, hit that at least one or higher, and you can see the you know so these are a little bit stronger. Um, this is when the trend is a little bit stronger is when those uh, those buy sell ratios are are higher. Why this is important is because you hear me talk about this all the time. You, you know you can always find a trade, um, and you know one of the things I've been cautious about with going over specific stocks uh, the last uh, about the last week or two is that the market conditions have not been great. Uh, but I understand that people are tuning in to find a trade. And I can find a trade. Um, and I'll, I'll, I can talk about a trade. And and we're going to talk about some today. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time. And, and uh, otherwise, I'd just not have a class if I wasn't going to do anything. But um, but the, the the next question is, should you be trading or, or should you be doing a lot of trades? Uh, you know, sometimes we can, you know, you can you can find a pattern like it make a trade but you're not going to be overly aggressive you're not going to get into 10 or 15 trades or something like that in the in a certain condition and this could be one of those that you look at is um you know is that buy sell ratio um over one um because you can be going through those muscle stocks and those muscle stocks are putting you in front of the the strongest stocks but um you might find that some of the trades you're getting into off of those lists aren't working and you're frustrated and you're saying, boy, this was, this is working great. Now it's not working as well. I'm not finding that many good stocks. This is probably the problem is that uh, the, the market conditions have deteriorated and, and um, the, the, the probability of those stocks outperforming or, or continuing to outperform starts to go down. And, and um, so this is something that you might want to add into your routine. It's pretty simple to kind of add it in there. And uh, I'll let you know in one of these updates when we're back up above one. I'll I'll make a comment. I'm going to make it a, a point to to start 
um, going over this uh, as we do our up market updates so we can uh, be aware of the the overall condition. So, uh, so just be aware of that as we go through some of the, the stocks today that uh, we're still not in the in the more ideal conditions that we'd leave, we'd like to see. Uh, sediment indicator is is backed off a little bit, um, and we're not we're not at extreme. We are moving towards that extreme range, but we're not there yet. And so we're we're uh, in a good spot as far as that's concerned. Um, quickly, let's take a look at uh, market charts here. Switch this over to candlesticks. Oops. So this is what I was talking about on Tuesday. We we were down down further, and then we kind of came off the lows of the day. Now, um, it, uh, some of that might have just been a little bit of concern uh, with Chairman Powell's uh, or the Fed's announcement on Wednesday and Chairman Powell's news conference afterwards. Um, but again, I, I still would like to see a deeper pullback in the market. Uh, I still think um, we're going to see uh, kind of stagnant conditions, um, and especially if that breadth doesn't pick up. Um, what that'll mean is that there's going to be fewer stocks that are leading the rally. Whenever there's fewer stocks leading the rally, it means that your chances of finding those fewer stocks uh, are being in the right stocks to make the money diminishes and and you'll find and you know what you'll find is you got five five trades you get into or something and and the markets the dow's up 200 points and all your stocks are underwater if they're, or they're down for the day and you're, you're wondering how can that be um well that's what's that's the problem is that uh is that there's uh there's fewer stocks that are causing that index to go up and the underlying conditions in the market are actually weak and uh, they're just not showing up um, yet in the uh, price action. So, um, so we'll see as we're breaking out here. We'll see if this lasts. One thing that makes me believe that it could last a little bit um, is, you know, one of the indicators I was talking about was the, the look at the Russell 2000. You know, I I said I don't think the market's going to um, move higher and, and get into those extreme conditions until the, the Russell participates. And we've seen a little bit of outperformance from the, the Russell 2000 over the last uh, few days. It's moved up a lot sh more sharply than the uh, other indexes. And, and uh, we'll see if that continues. Um, another thing that uh, that I'll take a look at is um, uh, the Dow transports and the, and the um, the SMH, the semiconductor, and then you can see the semiconductors have really had a, a, a pretty strong couple of days here, and they're real close to breaking out. That's pretty bullish for the market. And um, transports, Dow transports, uh, are up a little bit uh, today, but they're still lagging a little bit. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on too. There's a little bit of a mixed signal there, but um, we'll see how that kind of plays out. Another thing that uh, you can keep an eye on is the fact that the VIX, although it uh, spiked a little bit on Tuesday, has come back down again, and uh, so there's a little bit, a little bit of uh, less concern out there that that um, the sell-off is coming. So, all right, let's look at some individual stocks uh, under the retail sector right here under the holds. I like uh, Dillard's DDS. Um, I think I went over this on Tuesday. Uh, this was a pattern I liked. But let's pull this one up here. I'll switch this back to signals here. Uh, this one looks like it's getting ready to break out. It's had a lot of resistance right here. You could wait for the breakout, um, and that would also, you know, if this if if this it ends up breaking out. Chances are the, the market is probably looking a little bit more healthy because uh, it's probably been moving up the last few days as well, and, and um, it's much, maybe much more likely that it'll it'll um, continue to move higher there. Plus, there's so much resistance in that area there. Uh, you know, it may not break out, and it may still be moving sideways, and you know, you don't want to be just sitting there holding onto it while it's moving sideways. Um, I like it also because it looks like it's a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern that's developed right here. 
you had kind of this V-shaped move down here. You had some consolidation right here and some consolidation right here. If that does break out, you can use that, the, the breakout point down to the base of the head and project that upward. That gives you kind of a minimum target of, of how far you expect that thing to go out of the breakout. Now, it could go much further than that, obviously, but that's just kind of a minimum expectation that you can, or target area that you could use. Uh, so I like DDS, another one in the retail sector. Is uh, Boot, Boot Barn Holdings. Now, this one does look like it's breaking out. Uh, you know, it's come off the highs a little bit there, but it does look like it's it's breaking out. It did go to a buy signal today, too. Um, so it's it's giving kind of both confirmation on that, uh, that it's breaking out and it's giving you the buy signal. Under uh, computer and technology, this is one. I covered on uh, Tuesday as well is uh, ZDGE. Now this one is, is maybe a little bit further from giving confirmation. Um, I, I like the overall sideways pattern right here after uh, moving up. But it, this one could go back to a buy signal and uh, hopefully break out to, or you could wait for the breakout on that one as well. Uh, that one, kind of, I think, could take off and, and make a pretty good move off of that pattern right there. That's a little ways to go to get to a buy signal. It's, it just barely moved back to hold. But we can put it in a watch list. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go through as part of the training today. I'm gonna go through and. Um, we're going to set up a watch list uh, so that we can we can put the the alerts on some of these stocks we go over, um, and then I'm also going to set up a, a portfolio for just these trades we do in the in the classes and, and each of the updates, um, so that we can kind of do a, I can do a little bit more of a visual training as we're as we're doing these, and we can kind of see how the performance goes on, on some of these, uh, but just kind of teach you how to set up, set up your system, you know, how to, how to get it going where, um, how to use the tools on the site um, and uh, make it uh, easier for you. Uh, so that, that's going to be part of the training. And, and so I'll throw, we'll do, a, we'll do some alerts on these and some of these have buy signals. We can go ahead and, and um, place the trades on those. We can set up some trades on those in a, in a portfolio. Um, under the financial sector or finance sector here, um, one thing I also want to point out too that you might not be aware of is these are these are real general um, sectors, and there's still a lot of them. But within each of those more general sectors, uh, in you know finance is one of those. If you click this little plus button right here, it, it'll have a drop down and it'll show you several um, smaller sectors or more specific sectors within that larger group. So if you wanna look at banks in the Midwest or investment brokers, um, you know, you can, you can go look through those. Now, the reason why you don't necessarily need to do all that, you know, break it down more individually is because all of these are going to be totaled up in this whole larger sector. So if you're just saying, hey, any anything in the financial sector that has a 98 strength rank and uh, is it currently a hold, I'm waiting for it to go to a buy, that's what I want to look for. That's why we mostly just stick to these larger ones. But I wanted to point this out to make sure you're aware that you can look at specific, more specific uh, sectors within those groups if there's a certain... Uh, one that you're looking for, or, or want to find, and, and it'll show you that uh, it'll show you that, uh, for instance, um, um, under consumer loans right here, 
Um, it has six stocks that are buys, 13 that are holds. Um, it has the uh, average strength rank. The average strength rank is 62. And um, and so you can um, uh, you can again you can kind of see you know kind of that that data as well. If we were to click on, uh, let's look at the at the uh, buys right here. So there's yeah, six buys in this group, um, and really only. Only the top one would be probably one we consider. We don't want to go a strength rank below 90 if we can avoid it. Uh, so we'll, we can take a look at this Regional Management Corporation, RM. And that's actually a pretty good pattern right there. You've got a little bit of a cup with handle pattern, or it looks like it's getting ready to break out again right up here. As it's had a buy signal for the last uh, week and a half or so, you could wait for it to break out, or you could just go buy it, uh, expecting it'll break out. I mean, just the fact that it's moved up through here and then moved sideways is pretty bullish. So anyway, you know, just want to let you know that that's there too. If you weren't aware that you can kind of break that down into smaller smaller sectors. Um, under business services, I'm going to go into the buy section here. And um, I think I've gone over the stock. I think I went over the stock recently. This PFMT, 98 strength rank. That looks very, well, it looks almost exactly like the one we just looked at. Um, but this one uh, did break out today, but it's kind of come back. But I like how it's kind of consolidated through here after you know, dropping, coming back up, kind of a little bit of a cup with handle formation. Broke out today, has a buy signal. Uh, I'd like to see it finish a little bit strong, uh, more towards the midpoint if it can. Uh, it's actually this this candle right here is actually kind of bearish the way it looks right now. It's, it's called a, a, an inverted uh, hammer, or no, that's a shooting star, shooting star candlestick formation when it shows up at the, at the top right here. And so near term, it, if that holds, it could pull back a little bit off of that. Those are very remember these are very short term, meaning within a few days this thing could pull back a little bit. Um, but if it can rally a little bit into the day and get a little bit closer to that breakout point, um, then that would actually be fine. It would look actually okay at that point, but um, we'll see see how that ends up playing out there. All right, let's go through then and, and uh, set up, first let's set up a, a watch list so we can, the reason why we're gonna set up this watch list is we wanna, we wanna be able to, set up an alert i'll show you how you can set up alerts we'll get an email um for instance on on uh we were looking at uh dds dillard's and we want to get in this thing when it goes from hold to buy so i'm going to set it up to where it'll send me an email when this thing goes to a to a buy signal and you know, then i can go in and just uh, place the trade to buy the shares. Or the, you know, like I said, we're trying to show you how you can make this uh, system real simple. Uh, we've got to set up the watch list first. So we're going to go to the watch list tab right here. And we're going to we're going to click on add a tab. A title for it. We'll just call it the stock specific. Okay, so now we've got that set up. So now we can, when we pull up 
and we're going through our retail stocks here. We find what we like here on Dillard's. We're going to add it to that watch list. You're going to click on that this little green plus button right here. And yeah, you have different watch lists, so you're going to have to put, uh, put it in the one you want. This, this, we're going to put it in the stock specific class watch list right here. And then um, I'm going to click on save and, and go to the watch list because I want that watch list to go ahead and pull up. And once you're in the watch list, you can come over here at the far right and click check this box, which is the alert. This is for the email alerts. And I want it, it's defaulted here to to email me when this changes from when the signal changes from hold to buy. You could also, when you're in the trade, you could you could tell you could set up an alert to tell you when it goes from from uh, hold to sell or or from uh, buy to hold or or what have you. So uh, let's click on uh, save. And so I'll get that alert uh, when that goes back to goes to a buy signal there. Now um, let's also set up a portfolio, and we're going to go. We'll place a trade because we do have a couple that have uh, those buy signals already. So let's go to uh, my portfolio right here, tab. And let's set up uh, let's set one up here. Let's do uh, add a tab. And um, we'll just name this one stock specific class as well. And we'll put in that's Let's put in a hundred thousand. Click save. All right, so now let's pull up. Um, let's go. Let's see, business services. We have that uh, PFMT. It already had a buy signal. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on um, and click on add to uh, to portfolio right here. The, the, that was that blue button. I don't know if you saw it. This, this blue button right here. And I need to say what portfolio I put that in. Let's put it in the stock specific class here. Uh, now it's currently at four dollars and eighty six cents. Now as part of this, I got to in setting up the the trade. I need to I need to have a stop loss, or I no I necessarily don't have to have a stop loss, but I want to. But um, I talked about this in a previous class. I think it was a couple weeks ago, maybe it was last week, um, or the week before that, about uh, position sizing. And um, in order to do that, you have to, to know what your risk is. We want to keep the risk, uh, meaning the risk in the trade. If we meaning if we get stopped out, or that that we're not risking more than one percent of our portfolio. We want to stay around that one to one and a half percent risk. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come back here. Actually, let's um, let me close this out. Let's. Put in a stop. We already know what our entry price is. I'm going to give this trade a little bit of room, especially since it's a pretty uh, inexpensive stock. I can give it a little bit more room. I'm going to put my stop around three dollars, which should be below this low right here. Um, so it would have to go. It would have to take out that low, this low, and this low. And at that point, you're probably wrong <laughs> on the trade if it came down that far. 
because at that point it's not a cup with handle formation anymore and and um so that's what I, I'd be willing to risk. And now keep in mind, if it takes off from here, if that is a cup with handle pattern, it should go up about the same distance as the top of the bowl, the bottom of the bowl. So um, you almost automatically have a kind of a minimum one-to-one -one reward to risk expectation, although it could go a lot further than that as well. So, uh, all right, so our, I'm gonna put my stop in at about $3. So let's uh, add the portfolio here, select stock specific class as the portfolio I want to be in. Um, my stop price is going to be $3, oops, not $300, $3. And now, you, as I mentioned, that, that training you kind of have to play around with this a little bit. Uh, we'll put in a number of shares, and then I want to I want to see it'll tell me what based on my entry and my stop, what my uh, portfolio percentage of my portfolio would be at risk. It also tell me the dollar amount that would be at risk um, based on the, those numbers. So I, you know, if you start off with just typing in a thousand shares, it's it's telling me that. Um, if I get stopped out at 1.86% of my portfolio is at risk, it'd be about an $1,800 loss. Well, remember, we want to keep that to about one, uh, one to about 1.5, 1.5% risk. And so, you know, basically, if I cut that in half, if I, well, I could probably go a little bit more in half. Let's go 600 shares. Yeah, so 600 shares is just a little over one. 1% risk, it's within that one to one and a half percent risk range. Now in that training, remember I told you, you gotta make sure you're, um, that if the trade doesn't work out, you you could lose 1,000, you're, 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 you're expected to lose about $1,116 if, if the trade doesn't work out. Um, if, if that dollar amount, is freaking you out and that's too high and boy you won't be able to sleep if, if you lost that much money on a single trade especially if it's like your first trade you're getting into or something like that then then that's too much you're still risking too much you got to lower that down you know you might you might maybe you're only going to be comfortable with um 200 shares or something like that 200 shares would be 372 dollars maybe you say okay i can handle that that's not that big a deal um okay then and that's what you need to start with. You need to manage those two things because this is how you keep your emotions in check. Um, you don't ever want to be in a situation where you lose on a trade and you get upset about the loss um, or that, that lot, the, the amount of money you lose keeps you awake at night or, or causes you to get angry. It, that's a, a, a clear sign that you're risking too much. Anytime that happens, you're risking too much. And that's a problem with your trading. It's something you've got to correct. Because trading should be emotionless. It should be, oh, I got stopped out. You know, no big deal. You know, it's like, it's like I'm sure if you go to a movie and buy a drink, you're not freaking out that you you just spent, well, maybe you are spent five dollars on a drink. You, you know, you just, it, it's effortless. It's not, it's not even something you think about. But, well, that's when you know you you've gotten your risk down to a level that you can handle. Okay. Now we can risk more than that, so I'm gonna bump that back up to 600 shares. And let's go ahead and purchase and go to my portfolio. All right, so, um, So now I, I'm not going to set up an. I could set up an alert if my exit strategy was to get out if it goes to the sell signal or something like that, but that's not my plan for this particular trade. I, I'm using that stop loss of, of uh, three dollars, and so um, you know that that that's going to be the the way I'm going to manage that. Um, on some of these trades, we will use that. We'll use a sell signal. And because um, that's like I said, if you just you don't want to be paying, you don't have to watch, look at this and watch it every day to see if it hits your stop. 
we can make it real simple. We'll just email you when it goes back to sell or goes back to hold or something like that, whatever, whatever you want to set up your criteria to get out. We'll, we'll, we'll play around with some of those with some of these trades that we uh, get into. Um, now, another one, let's, let's do another one here real quick because I, I think there was... So let's go back to um, computer technology, that Z -E Z -D -G -E. Remember, I like that pattern, but it's going to be a while before this one goes back to a buy signal. Um, let's go ahead and add that to our watch list. So let's click on watch list. I'm going to add it to our stock specific class watch list. Um, so I should hit go to the watch list, save and go to watch list there. Okay, here we are. So we can set up an alert. It goes from hold to buy, send me an email. And then um, there was another one that was, I think it was, uh, I was on the finance here, the, the, it was consumer loans, it was that RM, yeah. This one, I think I had a buy signal. Yeah, that one had a buy signal. So we can go ahead and and uh, let's add this to the portfolio here. Oh, wait, wait, let's find our stop. Let's put a stop down here. Kind of like we did with the other one. If this is a little bit of a bowl shaped move, let's put our stop down below that. Uh, I'm just gonna put it about 43. That'd be actually a little bit lower, but let's put it at about 43. And let's add it to our portfolio here. Oops, our stop price at uh, 43, getting in at 51. Number of shares, um, oh, why did that? That's weird. Hold on, let me see what. What I did wrong there. Hold on. Let's see if we can enter this in again. 43. Let's do 50 shares. It's not showing my portfolio risk. Is it? shares that should be right around that one percent risk I'll have to find out why that well, I, must, I must have done something wrong there all right let's go ahead purchase all right so we'll um we'll kind of add some of those in and as we and we'll do some additional trainings on some of the other features, but that way we, we kind of are following these a little bit and um, kind of kind of track how they're doing and, and um, uh, you can kind of see it, see the software in action, so to speak. All right. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, we'll see, like I said, one thing to keep an eye on is to keep an eye on that, that market breadth, see if it starts picking up. That'll be a good sign, and um, we could trust the breakout here a little bit better if that if 
that takes place. Also keep an eye on the Russell 2000 to see if that is, is coming back and looking like it's moving towards breaking out and going to a new all-time high. Um, that'll, that'll tell us we're dealing with a little bit stronger market at that point. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday for the market update. Bye now.